So you're thinking about getting a real estate license, huh? Well, you're in luck because I made this complete video as a step-by-step -step guide to show you how you can get your real estate license in any state and in any situation. So let's make some coffee. Let me sit down, show you how to get your real estate license and how to become a successful realtor. Okay, let's start talking about some real estate. I think I got the wrong drink here. Okay, let's get started in this video and I'm gonna teach you, just so you know, a complete guide, a step one through all the way, step 27. Just kidding, there's not 27 steps, but however many steps it takes, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks throughout this video that I wish I had known before I got my real estate license on how to save some money, how to speed up the process, and ultimately how to become a successful realtor because that's probably why you're watching this video in the first place. You don't wanna work at your job. You wanna get paid for what you actually are worth, more importantly, and believe me, you can definitely do this. So a little positivity for you if you go and check out this video that I'll leave over here and down in the description as well is my three-year story from being a full-time associate working at a bank to becoming a full-time real estate agent my entire process how much commission I made for the past three years so that you can learn from my mistakes and hopefully not become broke like I did so don't do that throughout this video by the way I'm gonna be leaving links to third-party sites like for the real estate courses and some other uh, prep agent you'll find everything down in the description below these are the sites that I personally use to become a licensed real estate agent and now licensed real estate broker in the state of Virginia and Maryland. You can use the same courses that I use. You don't have to, it doesn't matter to me. But if for some reason you don't see your state available for one of the courses that I mentioned, then just leave a comment down in the description below on what state you're looking to get licensed in. And I'll make sure to do the research and reply back to your comment as soon as possible. So let's get started with step number one. And by the way, before we get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Two thumbs up if you really like this video and you find it helpful. So step number one is going to be to pass your real estate license course. Now there's two ways you can go about getting your real estate license course. The first way of getting a real, real estate license course is by doing it online. Now I'm gonna leave a link in the description down below for the course that I use to get my uh, real estate license. But basically think about it like this. This real estate licensing course is kind of like your pre-education to start learning the term terminology, the law, your role as a salesperson, and just to get your feet wet ultimately. Think about it as kind of like your undergraduate degree before you actually specialize into what you're actually wanting to do. As far as the time frame goes for this online course, I would budget at least three months. It typically costs a few hundred dollars. For the most part, it's a few hundred bucks. Budget at least two to three months if you're going to take it online because there's just an overwhelming amount of material, terminology, law, contractual law that you have to learn. I highly suggest you just spread it out out over the course of a few months rather than just cramming it all in in you know 15 or 20 days because you're not gonna learn anything your brain cannot absorb all of this information as a front warning you're going to get overwhelmed stick with it I promise you it'll be worth it but in a nutshell online is one way that you can do it you can also take the course of going in person I'll leave a link down in the description for that as well for the most part all you have to do is just Google you know real estate license in your state enter your state in person course and typically who holds these types of courses are local brokerages because they want to get more contact information to try to recruit you at the end you don't have to feel peer pressured but think about it like this it's equivalent to going to try out a local gym in your area and then giving you like a two-day pack I'll give you more tips on what brokerage you should sign up after that but for the most part just do anything you can to wrap your brain around as much knowledge as you can and get this certificate from start to finish a hundred percent okay so once you pass your real estate licensing course whether you did it online or in person you're going to be given a certificate. Now that certificate is going to allow you to go and register to take your state or your national test. Now you can do this, I believe because COVID has come around, you can do this either online or in person at a local proctored testing center. I don't believe, and this depends on the state, so again, do your due diligence, but I don't believe there's an attempt amount or attempt limit. You could probably take it as many times as you want, but again, there's a charge since it's being proctored every single time, and you don't want to have to take it 10 times and pay $600 in fees. If there's not an attempt limit, like if you don't have to take the test three times and then have to redo the entire thing again, I would highly suggest you just to go book the test and get a feel for what is actually happening because you're not really gonna know what to study for until you've actually taken the test. Think about it like this. The real estate licensing course teaches you the vocabulary. Once you pass the licensing course's final test, you'll kind of get some scenario questions in there, but the state and national licensing test is very common 
concentrated on scenario specific questions and it's very concentrated on understanding the concepts. So they'll give you really, really intense scenario questions like a paragraph long, but really you only have to know one thing in the entire question from keywords in the question to be able to answer the question correctly. And it's multiple choice. So it's not like you can really go that wrong by eliminating two of the dead wrong questions and then just having a 50-50 shot. And while you're studying for your state and national tests, there's three things that I would highly suggest you to check out and I'll leave them all in the description below. The first one is going to be taking advantage of the free courses and free videos from Prep Agent. Prep Agent has a small YouTube channel that teaches real estate agents how to pass the state and national exam. He has hundreds of YouTube videos teaching you contractual law, what easements are, and so on and so forth. And I highly suggest you to check it out. He also does have a course that you can purchase as well. But if you're just checking out the uh, free videos that he has on YouTube, it'll probably help you pass your national exam a lot easier than um, just blindly taking it and really not knowing what you're doing. In order to help you pass your state exam a little bit faster, I would highly suggest you to print out the concepts like I told you from the course material with the link down below. I want you to Google a lot of those state specific concept questions. So for example, if you have a question about CE classes or training education courses you have to take as a real estate professional in your state, you can Google that particular question and then you can type in your state. It be like a little Quizlet section about that as well that you can use. It's something that I personally use, but Google is going to be your best friend with this, as well as the real estate course that you purchase when it comes to studying for the state specific material. So you studied this hard and you're about to take your state and national test. Uh, just to give you an example of what you can expect, what they're going to do is you're going to enter a proctored room where there's going to be cameras everywhere. Uh, you're going to be in a public room at a computer. They're going to give you access to most likely just a basic calculator. So you want to make sure that you leave your phone in the car, everything like that. They're either going to take the state and national um, back to back most likely. So it's going to be a long period of time. Make sure you hydrate before that. Make sure you have your head on straight. You get a good night's sleep. To set expectations, the state test, depending on what state you're in, is probably going to be anywhere between 30 to 60 questions. And your national test, I believe, is around 80 to 100 questions. And I believe 10 of those questions don't even count towards your score. So you can answer them right or wrong and it wouldn't affect your actual outcome. If you end up passing one of the two, like say you pass the national test, you're still allowed to go back and only take the state. It's not like you have to pass both together, but this is the kind of test that you're going to have to trust your instinct with and really just go with the first decision that your gut tells you to go with. So don't overthink the question. Personally, me, <laughs> I didn't even go back and review the whole test because I didn't want to second guess myself. It should take you about three to four months to go from the course very first start day to the day that you're going to pass your real estate uh, state and national test. And then you have two options, which brings us to step number three. The, the first one is you can go inactive with your license which means exactly what it sounds like. You can basically not perform any sales, but you'll have your license with the board. It'll just be an inactive status. Uh, the second thing you can do is you can go active with a licensed broker. What that means is you're going to basically be choosing a Keller Williams, a Coldwell Banker, any one of those types of brokerages. It doesn't have to be the large ones. You know, I'm just naming them because you most likely have heard of those before. As long as it's a real estate company that has their brokerage license, you can hang your license with that firm and uh, ultimately start performing real estate transaction. Now, I did mention there could be three scenarios. What you can do is you can find a local brokerage or a smaller brokerage company that has a referral status. And what that allows you to do is not necessarily perform transactions, but still be in that active status without the monthly or you know yearly fees of the associations and the MLS dues, which we'll talk about next. Hang your license under the referral status of that brokerage, and you can continuously refer that business out and still collect a commission. Step number four is one of the most common asked questions and this is really where your fees start to come in. So the two or three main fees that you're going to have once you pass your real estate course is going to be your brokerage fees. If you have any, you're going to have your MLS dues, which is basically your hub of where you're going to go in, search for properties for your clients and where you're going to be listing properties for sale. For the Northern Virginia area, my charge is around $125 a quarter. Now you do need to pay for that upfront if you go in the active status. And then lastly, one of the the bigger fees that you're going to have to pay with is being a part of a local association as well as the National Association of Realtors. If you're new to this, you don't have to know what any of that means. In a nutshell, my association for Northern Virginia, NVAR, which is Northern Virginia Association of Realtors, but basically it's where you get access to all the real estate forms, the residential contracts, the addendums, and where you can get access to your lockboxes so you can access lockboxes as well. Usually for the first time of starting up with these companies, there's a 
one-time setup fee. Your first year in dues is typically around six to $800, just depending on the association and the state that you're actually in. So all in all, after paying for the real estate course, which is a few hundred bucks, after paying for the real estate proctored exam, which is maybe 50 or 60 bucks each time you try, and then after paying for your MLS dues and your local association dues, you're all in around a thousand to $1,500, just depending on what area or state you're in. Now, the good news about all of this is you can put all of this on a credit card, get the rewards for it, and uh, you'll continuously pay that next year and the year after. However, what I do want to point out is that this is one of the lowest cost fields to get started in compared to basically almost any other industry out there. Because if you think about it, you only have to pay $1,500 to within 30 to 60 days, if you know you work your butt off, close a $10,000 deal. I mean, that's a pretty good ROI if you ask me. So don't get caught up in the whole, you know, oh, I have to spend thousands of dollars to get started in real estate. Okay, so I'm gonna make another video about this and eventually I'll leave it in the description down below. But so that you don't forget to watch the second video, if any of this caught your attention, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because it truly means a lot. What type of brokerage should I hang my license with? Uh, I kind of touched on this before, but as a new real estate agent, there's kind of a lot of upfront fees. So you're gonna wanna choose a brokerage that doesn't charge a lot of monthly or reoccurring fees. For the most part, this is the distinction that you'll have in choosing brokerages. You're gonna either be able to choose those main type of Keller Williams, Coldwell Bankers, but for the most part, uh, they're gonna charge you 50-50 split on all the transactions that you do. To me, yes, they have great training and I'm a little bit biased towards the smaller local brokerages because they can give you more personal help and a little bit higher split than kind of those main franchise brokers. Interview at least two to three brokerages. Choose someone with definitely above a 50-50 split unless they're giving you business and then partner up with a local agent in your brokerage that can take a split from your transaction and just walk you through how they would perform that transaction. Now granted, choose someone that's going to take the time and walk you through how to fill out the form, how to list the property from A to Z, produce an upfront agreement with them like, hey, I'll give you 25% of my commission if you just walk me through this transaction. Don't sign up for any of those mentorship programs. In a nutshell, I just wanted to make sure you were up to speed with that because depending on what step you are in this journey or if you've already passed your proctored exam this can move pretty fast so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope it was informative if it was give this video a thumbs up if any of this helped you at all i would highly suggest you to go check out my other video which i will leave a link in the description down below about my three-year journey as a real estate agent there's a ton of learning lessons in there that i wish i had known before a lot of people end up dropping out of real estate i know you've heard the statistics before and i don't want you to be another statistic i want you to start chasing your financial freedom catch you guys in the next one